The ancient Egyptians are renowned for establishing one of the greatest early civilizations in world history, leaving behind a rich cultural legacy that includes the Great Pyramids and the Sphinx. But beyond their architectural marvels, what was life really like for the ancient Egyptians? As it turns out, mummification was just the tip of the iceberg. Here are the 10 strangest customs of ancient Egypt. Number 10. Wigs Ancient Egyptians loved cleanliness, and one way they maintained their personal hygiene was by shaving their heads. A shaved head was not only more comfortable in the hot Egyptian climate, but it also helped avoid the dangers of lice infestations. Although they are commonly depicted in art as having long black hair, these were actually wigs. One of the main reasons for wearing wigs, especially among the working class, was to protect their shaved scalps from getting burnt in the sun. Wigs were also used for decoration and to cover thinning hair. Interestingly, lice were so prevalent that wig makers had to clean the hair with combs to remove lice eggs. Combs found with traces of lice eggs still in their teeth provide evidence of this practice. The royal family, in particular, was fond of using wigs. They wore them in daily life and for special ceremonies, with some wigs dyed blue, green, or red, and adorned with precious stones. It has also been discovered that ancient Egyptians, especially royals and nobles, used an early type of hair gel on their wigs. This gel, made from the fatty acids of both plants and animals, created the perfect environment for the wig to be naturally mummified alongside the human body. While young children also shaved their heads, noble children often had a long lock of hair on the side of their head, called a side lock of youth, symbolizing that the wearer was a legitimate hair of Osiris. Number 9. Childbirth Childbirth can be one of the most painful experiences in a mother's life. So, imagine going through labor without the support of modern medical care and practitioners. When giving birth in ancient Egypt, mothers would go into a squatting position over two large bricks, now known as Abydos birth bricks. The bricks would be decorated with colorful images of the gods and happy children to invoke protection for the mother and new baby. They believed that the infant needed to be protected from evil spirits who would attempt to harm the child from birth. After all, the infant mortality rate at the time was so high. The mother-to-be was attended by her handmaidens, who would help her remain in the squatting position as the midwife delivered the baby. The birth bricks were a crucial part of the ceremony of childbirth, because the richer you were, the better and more highly decorated birth bricks you owned. Number 8. Laxatives The ancient Egyptians were early proponents of hygiene and understood the importance of keeping their bodies clean, even if they didn't yet comprehend the concept of bacteria. However, they did recognize the connection between maintaining personal hygiene and avoiding illness. While this awareness is impressive for a civilization that formed over 5,000 years ago, their chosen solution left a bit to be desired. The ancient Egyptians were avid users of laxatives, with most people using them several times a month to ward off diseases. The prevailing medical theory of the time was that the body contained numerous channels that could become blocked by evil spirits, leading to sickness. They believed that laxatives unblocked these channels and saw them as the remedy for most, if not all, ailments, ironically, even for complaints of diarrhea. The types of laxatives used included figs, bran and dates, but they also utilized bowl stimulants such as colocynth and castor oil. Number 7. Bedwetting Wearing a bag full of mouse bones around your neck may not sound like a good idea to us today, but this was the very remedy prescribed to those having trouble with bedwetting in ancient Egypt, and it didn't stop there. Rodent-related cures seem to have been very popular with the ancient Egyptians. Treatments involving mice were used in ointments to help everything from scalp issues to rheumatic pain. The bag of mouse bones remedy was also suggested to help a teething child. With mother and child having first eaten the cooked mouse, the treatments likely had more negative effects on these ailments, as examinations of the digestive tract of several children buried in the cemeteries of the pre-dynastic period found evidence of rodent bones. Alongside actual written accounts of this remedy, it's proof the practice was widely and frequently used. 
Number six, servants coated in honey. There's a saying that you'll catch more flies with honey than with vinegar, and Pharaoh Pep II would have totally agree with the sentiment. Peep absolutely hated flies, but with the Nile in close proximity to the royal quarters, the pests were commonplace. In response, Peep ordered that several naked slaves or servants be kept around him at all times, but here's the kicker, they had to be completely covered in honey. That way, the flies would swarm to the honey-smeared servants and not bother him. While this barmy idea did actually succeed in luring the flies away from Pape, it must have been more than a little uncomfortable for the servants involved. Plus, Pape II lived to the age of 100. He had one of the longest reigns of any Egyptian pharaoh, which means a long list of honey-drenched servants with much shorter lifespans. Number 5. Incestuous Marriage Throughout history, royal dynasties have often practiced intermarriage or incestuous marriage, a trend that persisted in some countries until the 16th century. Many commoners also believed it was acceptable to marry a cousin. In ancient Egypt, however, intermarriage was not just acceptable, but expected of the new pharaoh. The usual candidate would be the pharaoh's sister, but marriages also occurred between cousins, uncles and nieces, and even mothers and sons. Moreover, most Egyptian pharaohs were polygamists with multiple wives. King Tutankhamun was perhaps the least scandalous in this regard, as he only married his half-sister. The ancient Egyptians believed that intermarriage was the best way to keep their royal bloodlines pure. This practice also imitated two of their most beloved gods, Isis and Osiris, who were both siblings and a married couple. Today, we know that interbreeding can lead to various genetic disorders in offspring, but intermarriage within the Ptolemaic dynasty had the intended effect. The Ptolemies, Macedonians who did not want to mix their bloodline with native Egyptians, managed to maintain control of Egypt within their family for almost 300 years through intermarriage. Number 4. Disabled Workers One of the biggest debates surrounding the ancient Egyptians was whether or not they used slaves to build their pyramids. While it's now proven that their builders were paid workers, paid one gallon of beer a day no less, there is another interesting facet to be found within the ancient Egyptian workforce, that many pharaohs chose to employ workers with dwarfism or gigantism. A pharaoh's pyramid was arguably the most important building project of his life, since it would help him on his journey to the afterlife. Besides the pharaoh's sarcophagus, it would also contain untold wealth and treasure. It was unsurprising then that the pharaoh often feared the looting of his bounty by the builders and the desecration of their all-important tomb. That's why they employed such an unusual demographic. Employing dwarves or giants was a great idea, as the benefits were twofold. The workers were thankful for the work, having potentially been snubbed because of their uncommon appearance, and secondly, the pharaoh knew that if the workers were to loot the tomb, they would be easily noticeable when trying to escape a crowd of people rather ingenious when you think about it. Number 3. Guilty until proven innocent. Although the ancient Egyptians disliked the death penalty and very rarely passed such a sentence, it wasn't exactly easy to get out of trouble once you found yourself accused. Nowadays we have the saying, innocent until proven guilty. In ancient Egypt, however, it was more of a case of guilty until proven innocent, and it was up to the accused to prove their innocence. If you think that this sounds like a fatally flawed system, then you'd be right. Beatings were common to prove a person's guilt, with the judge and police at the time knowing that after sustained beatings, people would often say whatever you wanted them to say. The other option for the accused was to be judged by the magic of an oracle, this involved standing in front of the statue of a god with two papers on each side of him which read innocent and guilty. The sentence would be decided by whichever paper the statue turned towards, but the real decision was made by the priests controlling the oracle statue. Priests had a huge amount of power in ancient Egyptian times, and courts such as these allowed them to decide a person's fate based on their own opinions and whims. Number 2. Police Monkeys the ancient Egyptians established the world's first police force. One intriguing fact you may not know is that they trained police monkeys alongside police dogs. 
The police force came into effect near the end of the Old Kingdom, with typical duties including patrolling marketplaces and temples to maintain law and order. At this early stage, officers were only equipped with a wooden staff, which made the trained police dogs and monkeys particularly useful. In times of disorder, these animals were used to chase down and apprehend criminals. How do we know that police monkeys did this? It's recorded in a 5th century tomb, which depicts a monkey in the marketplace holding a thief by the leg while waiting for a police officer to arrest him. Additionally, at the tomb of the two brothers, there's a painted scene featuring a monkey identified as a security guard. Number 1. Priestly Rituals Priests played a hugely important role in ancient Egyptian life, but it wasn't always an easy job. They lived in temples dedicated to the Egyptian gods and cared for these gods as if they were physically present on earth. Every day, food was prepared and presented to the god statues in the temple, and it wasn't removed until the priests received the sign that the god had received the nutrients from it. In keeping with their love of cleanliness, priests shaved their entire bodies for hygiene reasons. They took two baths in the morning and two at night, one hot and one cold each time. Greek chronicler Herodotus noted that the priests of ancient Egypt followed an unusually strict regimen and were only allowed to wear shoes made of papyrus. Perhaps the strangest aspect of priestly life was that their initiation ceremony included circumcision. This practice was also common for entry into the nobility of ancient Egypt, indicating it was seen as a way to distinguish an elite class. I'm sure Egyptians today are glad that this particular ceremony has been lost to the pages of history. Which custom did you find the strangest? Are there any others that I've missed from this list? Let me know in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching.